So now that we have our steps identified, we have our sequence of events established, there's one last thing that we're going to add as far as our tags and addressing. And I'm going to just copy the heading here. I'm going to go ahead and paste that in so I have that. I'm going to put in some timers. I know that I'm going to be using some timers to control my inputs. So I'm going to start with T4 colon 0 because we know that T is the timer file, 4 is the number that's associated with it, and the first timer file that's available is T40. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab that and autofill down to about 10 timers. And again, the status here is 0. And we're going to auto-fill this as well. So I'm not going to choose to use a symbol here because I'm not going to need it in my programming, but I am going to use a description. So I'm going to use a timer to prove that the inputs are actually extended. And you'll see this as we start programming. So base cylinder retracted. Okay, so T4 colon 0 will be base cylinder retracted. The next one, T4 colon 1, will be base cylinder extended. And T4 colon 2, as you can see, I'm just going through my sequence of events again and naming each timer accordingly. So the next one here is inspection retracted. And the next one would be inspection cylinder extended. Okay, now you'll continue on and you can create a timer for each input that we're going to use. Because remember, we told you that we're going to take the physical input that's on the PLC station. We're going to program that to an internal bit. And we're also going to use a timer with that internal bit to provide us with some more additional control over this PLC station.